Jack Black is very similar to this character and like he can't sit still. It this guy wants to go off and be fighting crime and he's got such energy and enthusiasm. Hold up, hold up. We've not got to that bit. Let's just rewind. Welcome to Stream It. This is the film and TV podcast full of things for you to watch. I'm Connor. Hello, hello. And this week, Stream It, we're exploring, of course, all the Christmas specials you can watch over the festive season. So here's my speedy little rundown of what's coming up in today's show. Dan got chatting to Hugh, who plays Jack in Quentin Blake's Jack and Nancy. We're exploring the new CBBC Famous Five show with the cast and the wonderful producer Hebe got chatting to the director and producer of Kung Fu Panda 4 Mike and Rebecca to ask about the release of the new trailer and of course I need to be busy don't I so I've got my three favourite Christmas movies you have to watch absolutely right now so uh, let's get going grab yourself your popcorn and maybe a mince pie if it's your fave maybe you don't like them so just stick to your popcorn get yourself comfy this is Funky to Stream It So first up, in this jam-packed episode, you may have heard of a very, very famous illustrator called Quentin Blake. He drew all the amazing pictures for the Roald Dahl stories we all love, like Matilda and Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, almost created like the vision of some of our favourite films ever. And now he has his own TV show based on two of his stories, Jack and Nancy and Zagazoo. There's the ship. Off they go on their adventures. The wind's really getting up. Dan caught up with you, who plays Jack in Jack and Nancy, to ask him all about the show. One of the country's best artists, Quentin Blake, who has illustrated David Walliams' books and Roald Dahl stories, wrote tons of his own books, and some of them are being turned into fantastic animations from the BBC. It's called Quentin Blake's Box of Treasures. One of those stories is called Jack and Nancy. And you know what? We're with Jack. Hugh Huckstep plays Jack. Hugh, thank you so much for being there. Hello, um, I'm Hugh Huckstep. Um, I'm voicing the character of Jack in Jack and Nancy, um, along with uh, Grace, um, who's playing Nancy. Um, it's about a, a jungle a jungle adventure, um, lots of funny humour scenes as well. Um, but yeah, it'd be great. Well, I'm so happy that you're there with us, Hugh. Um, how much did you know about Quentin Blake and his uh, illustrations when you signed up to take on this story and this character? Well, um, when I was younger, I read a lot of the Roald Dahl books, so I've always uh, liked the Quentin Blake illustrations, and like they've always been like really unique. And w- when you see them, you instantly know it's Quentin Blake. It's got that unique style about it. And it sort of tells the story quite well. And it's it's amazing how in the animation in Jack and Nancy, they've managed to make that distinctive style of drawing like those pictures come to yeah. life on the screen w- what did you think about when you first saw it and saw how it has come to life oh i can believe it. <laughs> that from it's gone from the book to then on screen um which we haven't seen before so it was great to see the still image sort of like move around on the uh, on the screen and the style of um, drawing really comes to life through the video as well. Well, you've kind of hinted at what it's about. So you, Jack, you wake up, you're in your bedroom with your with your sister Nancy, and th- then you immediately start hearing like strange pirate noises out out the window because you live on this harbour. Just tell us about the story as much as you can about what happens to you. So basically, what happens is. And there's the two characters, Jack and Nancy, and they live by the seaside and they've always dreamt of going on an adventure of their own. But they're too young and their parents don't um, don't won't allow them to go on their adventure of their own. And and they're really they're good friends with um, a pirate and they get to hear loads of stories from him about his adventures. Um, and they always talk about his adventures. And when he comes back um, from his adventures, he, he tells them um, to Jack and Nancy, um, shows them all the new things, like the new fruits and things that he's found. Um, and one day they manage to go on an adventure of their own through the umbrella and they fly away to an island. So, Well, 
I, I, I love like finding out how you got to do it, really, because I know loads of people listening will be, like act in their spare time. They might do Saturday drama classes. They'd love to do something like this. So how did it all come about for you, Jack? So um, when I was uh, younger, I've always really liked uh, acting, uh, dressing up as my own characters. And I went on an acting class um, a while back, maybe two years ago, um, and I managed to get an agent who puts me up for the roles. And I was on holiday at the time, so I was just enjoying my holiday and then uh, get the email through uh, from my agent about this job. And I thought, oh, I'll have a go at it. And then came to this. So. Wow, two years. That that That's how yeah. quick this has all happened in just two, two years. Two years, yeah. It's crazy to think wow. how I've gone from starting all the way to this. Yeah. I know, and it's uh, like it, it's a big project to be part of, and a, and, a, and a real, like I said at the start, Quentin Blake is one of the country's best artists. He's almost a national treasure, really. So, for you to be doing this for the BBC in one of your first jobs, how does that feel? Um, it feels amazing. I mean. I've liked the role Dar and I never thought, I never in my lifetime thought that I would actually be able to play one of his characters, um, which was just really great to do. And it was amazing, really. And like starting off and thinking into the future, how much has this work inspired the idea that you want to carry on acting and you want to do more TV stuff and stage stuff and maybe film stuff when you're older? Well, I've got to, I've been on film sets before and mm. I've also seen the behind the, the behind the set and all like the camera and lighting. So it, it shows that the, the uh, industry is not just through acting. You can do things like producing um, and directing. So I think if I was to carry on with this in the future, then I'd probably go maybe on set. Um, and I'd quite like to be a director myself. So, Wow, that, that's amazing that you know that already. Um, well, listen, in the, the cast that you're with, you're with... Uh, Grace Nettle, who plays Nancy, as you said, and you know, you meet the pirate and you go off on this these adventures. What was it like working with these people? Were you all doing it separately? Were you were you recording it by yourself and sending that off? Were you there acting in a real room with these people? How did that work for you? So we were in a little um recording studio um and we had microphones strapped around our head uh, so we can move around freely. Um, I was in the room with um, Grace when we recorded it. So we were like um, in front of each other, uh, like bouncing off uh, off one another. And then there was a big screen you could see in through it. Um, and then there were people on the, the recording stuff. Um, and yeah, so that was the thing. We had a, a thing around our heads, the recording. So we can move. Wow, you're like, act- like properly acting in real life. Yeah, it was like acting on screen. So but you couldn't see your face, but you think you wouldn't have to use your face and just your voice, but by using your face, it sort of comes through in the voice as well when you're doing it. Uh, when, you're, when you're at school, do any of your mates care about this? Are they are they bothered that you're off doing like stuff, the BBC that you've been on film sets? Is it like fun at the start for them, but then they're like, oh, okay, mate, you know, we, let's, we don't need to talk about like, what's it like? Oh, some of the boys are always asking, like um, my friends um, are always asking um, what I've been up to. Um, they're always interested about it. And I just tell them, I can't tell you. It's it's <laughs> confidential. And they're always asking me and begging me to tell them. But I, just, I can't tell. I can't tell you. <laughs> oh, you could be anything. You could be like a spy. Then you could be Alex Ryder with the level that you're not telling people these things, you. Yeah. Secret super spy. <laughs> um well you as jack go on this adventure with nancy how about i give you uh like like you can go anywhere in a day and you don't need to worry about the time it takes you to get there you can go from one country to the next if you could go on adventures like a load of adventures in one day where do you reckon you'd go what would you do in your dream day is this like fictional is that in the actual world or oh yeah fictional yeah yeah Uh, if i could go anywhere I'd probably go somewhere like, have you heard of the Percy Jackson books? Yeah, I know the Percy Jackson books. Yeah, I'd probably go there and meet all like the Greek gods. And then after that, I might go to Hogwarts and meet all the wizards. That would be really cool. Um, and like learn spells and stuff. 
And then probably to finish off, I'd probably go to the Marvel Universe. Wow. Well, listen, Hugh, thank you so much for joining us. I loved hearing about your your perfect day, hearing about you um, on like movies. So much fun. And I really enjoyed watching Jack and Nancy. So, Hugh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. And here's another show coming to CBBC, The Famous Five. We're going to get away with this. Let's find out. Great secrets are about to be revealed. Never underestimate children. I must admit, they do appear to be getting on famously. Now, the wonderful producer Hebe, she's always running around doing all the fun stuff. She caught up with the gang to see what it's like to be part of the famous five. We're on Stream It Podcast for Fun Kids. I'm Diana Babnikova, who plays George. I'm Kira Kusin, who plays Dick. I'm Ellie Rose, and I play Julian. I'm Flora Jacoby Richardson, and I play Anne. Fantastic. Flora's wearing the most amazing top. I absolutely love it. <laughs> um, so I thought, first off, the best way to start would be for you to describe your character in one word. Adventurous. Adventurous. Smart. Smart. Strong. Strong. Sassy. You're, I can tell you really like your characters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, why have you picked those words? Why those words? Why sassy? Because... Um, there's a lot of times when Anne is just like, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Or like, can you carry my bag? Or not, please. Like, there's a scene where Julian has her on her back, like practically walking up a mountain. And she doesn't say thanks. She just hops off and she's like, oh, can you not drop me, please? Do you, do you think you'd be like, friends with her in real life? Ooh, I feel like I probably <laughs> would. I feel like, yeah. Did you teach her some manners? Yeah, I would teach her some manners, but then keep the sass. She could teach me the sass. I think you picked it up. Look at that. <laughs> Straight away. Why did you put strong? Because um, he, oh, he is. He is strong. <laughs> strong. Yeah, he is strong. Um, and I, that's my favourite thing about him. Do you think yeah. you'd be friends with him in real life? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I reckon, yeah. I'd probably get him to play rugby yeah. with me. Oh, yeah. very nice. Very nice. Why did you pick your... What was your word again? Smart. Smart. Um, because he's like... He's... There, but um, he's like internet, but back then he knows everything and anything. Wow. Like every history. He is Wikipedia. Yeah. yeah. He knows every history timeline, every train stop, every timings of every train. I can barely think of a train to get to. Do you feel like you've picked up loads and loads of facts now because you've played them? Yes. I know how to get from Swanage to Temple Church, so that's <laughs> a handy thing. Really interesting information to know. Yeah. That's now in your brain. Something else has been kicked out that. to be there. That's amazing. And what about yourself? Why did you pick that word? Um, because George is 100% adventurous. Her whole life, she's just been exploring an island. Like, you can't get more adventurous than that. There you go. Easy. Thanks, guys. God, I'd love to be part of the Famous Five. Do you think I'd fit in? I think I would if I do say so myself. Now, if you think that's it, well, we have loads of fun for you because if you're a fan of Kung Fu Panda, I've got news for you. The trailer for the new movie, Kung Fu Panda 4, next year has just been released and producer Hebe got chatting to the director and producer, Mike and Rebecca, all about what we can expect from the movie. I am so excited. Absolutely massive fan of uh, Kung Fu Panda. Um, And I'd love to know how excited you are about bringing it back for a fourth time. It's so cool. Oh, man, we we had a blast. Yeah, we're thrilled. We had a blast making it. And, uh, you know, it's been since 2008 was the first one, which was so long ago. And it's pretty incredible how much technology and camera work and even fighting styles have evolved so much in filmmaking that we like really went for it on this one and opened it up and did everything we possibly could to make this Poe's next big adventure. What's um, what in particular in this one has changed? Can you give us any insights into what your the big well, changes I've seen? Well, yeah, one is we just have Poe journeys to a new location, a brand new city called Juniper City, and it's just filled with as many characters as we can cram into this film, and it's really exciting. And then. Just like I said, the techniques, the like this GoPro camera work that I have, we haven't seen in animation so much. It was great to put it into an action franchise like this one to really make use of all the new camera work, and not to mention the special effects that are so beautiful. We've yeah, got like a expanded. everything's expanded. We have a supernatural villain, so there's like just the look of it. It's like bigger and richer than all 
the past three movies put together. And, and I think for Poe, this time having to go on an adventure with somebody. Yeah. He's been kind of the solo act right now. He actually has to figure out how to how to work with somebody and, mm-hmm. and be on this adventure. So has there been a big change in his relationship then? So working with one person rather than the team that he's been with for the last three movies. Because I didn't spot them in the trailer and I was like, oh, hold on. Well, you'll have to wait to see. They make an appearance. They do make it. The Furious Five make an appearance. But um, but we had so many new characters in this thing that we just, uh, you know, we tried to make room for, to introduce. There's a uh, a granny boar. There's a, a a thieving pangolin. There's. I'm sure you saw those three little cute bunnies that become very violent at times. Not so cute so, bunnies. <laughs> right. Right. And uh, so we just had a blast, like cramming in as many characters as we could to this new to this new version. Are there any animals that you have brought in that you're so excited to be able to play with, with animals that we haven't seen before in Kung Fu Panda? I would, I think our pangolin. Yeah. Because our pangolin, you know, he can roll up into a ball and, you know, we can have some, a lot, the animators had a lot of fun with that. Yeah. He rolls around like a bowling ball and he goes through tubes. He lives uh, underneath the city. We've got this huge city. uh, And, you know, when we're in the city, we're through this crowded streets. It's almost like Times Square. And then we're also up on the roofs having chase sequences on the roof, but we're also down below. There's a whole world underneath the city where the thieves, thieves live. And it's run by this pangolin played by uh, Kihi Kwan, Kwan, Academy Award winning. And he rolls around through the tubes, through the sewer pipes, all underneath the city. It's really fun. I love that. Uh, Is there anyone that you see yourself in that you kind of put yourself in the movie slightly? That's a great question. Well, I got to say, I think everyone relates to, yeah, the bunnies. We're all, we're very cute and very violent. Until someone really annoys you and then suddenly. (laughs) Right. I just think everyone relates to Poe, I think he's just like he's he's I mean, I love working on these franchises. I've worked on uh, Trolls and Shrek and SpongeBob and the Lego film. And what's really fascinating is looking. Why do these characters stand the test of time? Why do people want to come back? And it's usually the lead character. And in this case, Poe, he's like an action packed. He's enthusiastic. He's a fanboy. He's super charming and he never grows up, even though he's leveling up in every film and always looking for inner peace and taking that next step. He's all, he remains kind of this innocent, very funny, uh, yeah. enthusiastic fanboy. So I think, yeah, I think he's a character that that's why these these movies work is he's one of those characters that people can identify with on, on uh, different levels. I was going to say in every movie, he seems to learn something about himself or his yeah. past or his yeah. relationships with people. Um, what are we looking for in this movie that he that this big takeaway learning curve for him? Well, I'll let you talk about the theme. But just mm-hmm. like before we started this thing, we it's it's really difficult to do. We have to make sure that we're evolving the character. And that's probably why it took so long to make this film, because we did not want to move forward until we had the perfect story to tell, until we really had something that was like the next thing. We didn't just want to make another film. We wanted to really evolved the character so our theme was really well so yeah to make point is to actually about evolving a character it's also then about how do you stay true to yourself but continue to grow and change and embracing change doesn't mean you're forgetting who you are but you're continuing to learn and grow so you know we took you know we took this movie and, and leaned into that for poe and it's about embracing change and taking the next step and that change can be scary but it can also be a really valuable and incredible thing for everybody. And, and that, you know, through that journey also, we, we have a theme of, you know, finding heroes in, in the unlikeliest of places. So, you know, not judging a book by its cover. So. I like that. Uh, the, I was really attracted to the theme of change too. Cause I think everyone can relate to that. Like even kids, Going to grade school, that's a change, and it's very scary. Going from grade school to junior high is a change that can be scary. Going to junior high to uh, high school, college, just any, like we're always moving ahead in our life, and it's and it's terrifying. But if you look at it as like you're not going to become something different, you retain who you are, and you just become something more, is I thought was really interesting. And that's kind of a lesson that Poe needs to learn. Um, he, he seems to be trying to find that inner peace. Yeah, um, in all the movies, he, he never really finds it. It's very deep down. Um, do you have any tips, or if, is there anything you've learned from his challenges um, to find inner peace and to find I, himself that you take with great, you? That's a great question. No, I haven't because <laughs> it's so hard. 
Jack Jack Black is very similar to this character, and like he can't sit still. It this guy wants to go off and be fighting crime, and he's got such energy and enthusiasm for all of us. It's a constant struggle. I think it's I think the lesson is you never achieve it. I think you're always working hard. towards it. You're in search of it because it is very hard, especially nowadays with our all the technology and our iPhones yeah. and computers. And stuff very hard to shut your brain down. It's very hard to relax and think about nothing, isn't it? Oh, it, completely. I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, you more know, so I, than ever. Like yeah. we're, we're in. You're constantly bombarded, right? I mean, you're right. There's never a moment where you can just, everything just shuts down. Or you could just chill out. But I think that's, what's great is like Poe shows us that like, it's okay. We're all, we're all searching for that. All. Even Shifu finds it difficult. <laughs> Even the great Shifu finds it very He's difficult right. to meditate. So. Speaking of Shifu, um, are there any characters that you're really excited, apart from Poe, to bring back uh, for a fourth fourth movie? I'm, I, I, we're excited that we've got a lot of our, uh, you know, original cast or ca cast members from prior movies back. I mean, everybody from, you know, Dustin Hoffman, the great James Hong, yeah. Brian Cranston. I'm you know. particularly excited that D Tai Lung comes back i mean that was the greatest villain i mean these movies are as good as your villain and that was one of the best dreamworks villains of all time was ian mcshane as tai lung and to work with him and have tai lung back and the animators are animating so tai lung again was a super special treat for 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 a fanboy right that is so exciting um so i only have one more question but um i'd love to know uh if you can sum up the fourth movie in a little like tease a sentence for us to get really excited it how would you sell it to us in a in a sentence i'd say funnier and more action-packed than the all previous three combined that is a big selling point i love that i know <laughs> right i rarely am able to put things in tiny sentences so i'm very proud of myself right now I'm good. it's hard for me not <laughs> to talk too much i so saw rebecca how would you sum it up in a sentence well, how do I top that? <laughs> I bet you could do it. How do I sum this moon? Um, the biggest adventure you're going to go on in 2024. Oh, Great. sold it. I'm sold. I'm there. Done. That's fantastic. Thanks, guys. I'm a massive, massive fan of Kung Fu Panda. I really, really am. It's one of my faves. So I'm so excited for that. Something to look forward to next year. Always nice when you get a trailer that drops near Christmas time and you know that next year is going to be a good one. Kung Fu Panda 4 on the way. And finally, you may have heard me popping up on the radio, bringing you my Stream It Santa film recommendations every day. Yes, I'm the Stream It Santa. Well, I thought I'd give you my three favorites that you simply cannot miss before the big day. So we're going to start with number three. The Grinch. Counting down the Christmas clock, all young people. Bless this Christmas music. It's joyful and triumphant. Jim Carrey is the, 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 the Grinch. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But what would I wear? Oh, ho! Forgot about the reindeer. Action! Absolute faves. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I actually didn't watch The Grinch for ages. The first time I ever watched it was only like three, four years ago, and it instantly became one of my favourite Christmas films. Jim Carrey is just obviously the best. I mean, Jim Carrey was almost born to be The Grinch. It suits him so, so well. It's all about all of the people that live in uh, Whoville. Yes, very, very Christmassy down in Whoville. And then The Grinch lives on the top of a mountain, and he's just a little bit of a, uh, yeah, doesn't really like Christmas at all. But it's just so, so magical. And what I love about it as well is that Christmas is for everyone, and Christmas is a magical time regardless. doesn't matter what you get up to at Christmas. There's always something for somebody, even The Grinch. I'm not going to give away too much, but let's just say maybe... Just maybe by the end, he may love Christmas. My number two is Elf. Your costume is pretty. Oh, it's not a costume. I'm an elf. Oh. Well, technically I'm a human, but I was raised by elves. Boy, can't wait to see my dad. We're, we're going to go ice skating and eat sugar plums. <gasps> I think someone sent you a Christmas gram. Dad! We should call security. Good idea. I like to whisper too. Now, uh, if you know Connor... You're going to know The Elf is one of the all-time best films ever. Now, I'm not even talking Christmas films. I'm actually just talking ever. Yeah, sometimes I do watch Elf in March, and no, don't have a go at me. So great. Will Ferrell at his absolute best. He's basically just a great big elf. Why? Because he's a human that somehow grew up 
of the North Pole with a bunch of elves. And, well, he can't really do elf things, but he really is actually a very, very important elf because he loves Christmas so much. He's on a big old adventure to try and find his real dad because he was adopted by an elf. Yeah, it's going to make sense when you watch it. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I mean, where have you been? But, yeah, so good seeing uh, Will Ferrell running around New York City as an elf trying to work out how humans live. It's very, very funny and super, super magical. And I kind of feel like Christmas isn't Christmas without Elf. So it's definitely a must watch. Oh, and also, by the way, don't put loads of sweets and maple syrup all over your spaghetti. I tried it once. It's disgusting. And my number one, I've watched it, I think, about 10 times this year already, is Home Alone. Where are you going? We're going to miss the plane. When the McAllister family left on their Christmas vacation. Did we miss the plane? <laughs> no, you just made it. Yeah! They forgot one small thing. Have yourself. I've had a terrible feeling. Christmas. Did you lock up? Let yeah. yourself be light. Do we set the timers on the lights? Mm-hmm. What else could we be forgetting? Our troubles will be out. Kevin! <laughs> need to say much about home alone i mean when it comes to christmas christmas is home alone it is just the most amazing film for so many reasons macaulay Culkin playing kevin i mean he gets left home alone doesn't he and there's lots happening yes there's lots of bad people that are trying to enter the house that he is in on his own and well i mean kevin yeah I, I think Kevin is one of the most cleverest kids, if that's even a word that I've ever met in my whole entire life, because I wouldn't be able to get rid of two really bad robbers like Kevin does. But it's so much fun. I really, really enjoy it. Super, super festive. Set in America as well. And there's something about American films at Christmas that make you feel all warm and cosy. Yeah, it's really, really good. And you know what I love about it the most as well? Look, I know I'm doing my top three, but when you finish watching Home Alone and you're like, oh, what a film, there's Home Alone too. Yeah, it's waiting right there for you. And they're both available on Disney+. Plus. So, uh, yeah, Merry Christmas. And uh, that's from me and Kevin. And that's it. If you enjoyed the episode, please do give us a follow so you don't miss future episodes and rate the podcast five stars too. Maybe drop a comment below as well and let me know all about your favourite Christmas film and why you love it. We're always looking for reviewers to come on the show too and tell us their favourite films. And we are looking to have a very, very busy 2024 when it comes to films. So we definitely need you to come on and tell us all about the films that you love and why. So yeah, get on the podcast. It could be you. If you want to get involved, you can. Head over to funkidslive.com forward slash stream it. Send me a message telling me about your favorite movie and you never know you could be part of stream it next year sound good merry christmas see you soon (laughs) 